are many people who don't really understand what Christmas is really about and where it comes from. There, there are millions of atheists, agnostics, and even a lot of Christians who, who have really been misinformed as to what Christmas is, is really about. If you want to be able to share the, the true meaning of Christmas, it's vitally important to thoroughly understand its history. So uh, what, what I want to do is uh, I want to take us through a walk through the history of Christmas, its many traditions, which most of us have pretty much grown up to love. Th this you can all follow along in the dictionary, history books, world religion textbooks, the scriptures, uh, the church fathers, pretty much all the major religion, or all the different denominations will admit these things readily, some of them very proudly. Uh, let's, let's talk about the date of December 25th, first of all. You know, many, many non-believers are more than happy to point out that December 25th is not the historical birth of Jesus, and that this date is found nowhere in Scripture. They, they'll also enthusiastically go on to claim that this is not, that this really is, in fact, the, the long-celebrated birthday of numerous heathen sun gods. You know, the... In order to accurately represent the one true God of the scriptures, we need to be able to be intellectually honest and take a real careful look at the his historical and scriptural facts concerning Christmas. The, the high day of ancient sun worship historically occurred every December 25th when the sun displayed its unconquerability, when it began to rise higher in the sky following the winter solstice. Hence, uh, December 25th was celebrated as the sun's birthday. This uh, pagan religious practice was the first historical observant of uh, December 25th as being a holy day. So uh, we can go back to the, the beginning of the story and take a look at really the first Christmas. This, the story, a lot of people don't realize, it's a lot older than we think, actually begins over 4,000 years ago in the land of Shinar, also called Babylon. According to the book of Genesis, he was the, the great grandson of Noah and was the king of Shinar, Babylon. He is depicted in the Bible as both being a man of power and a mighty hunter. He, he also appears in numerous legends and folktales outside the Bible as well. It, it was King Nimrod who led the first world revolt against God after the flood when he established the Babylonian world tyranny and constructed the infamous Tower of Babel. You know, Nimrod actually married his own mother whose name was Semiramis. Nimrod's birthday was December 25th, This the same day considered by pagans to be the birth of the sun. Nimrod was pretty much adored by, by his people as a god. Con considered by uh, many historians to have been the first sun god upon which all the other sun god legends were based upon, this Nimrod story. After God destroyed the Tower of Babel, Nimrod was, according to a lot of legends, was, was killed by Noah's son Shem. And his, uh, his body was castrated and his parts were spread all across the land of Shinar. After Nimrod's death, his widowed mother-wife, so-called Semiramis, she claimed that she had become impregnated by the rays of the sun. And, and later, that, that next December 25th, baby Tammuz was born. Baby Tammuz is... In the scriptures, a lot of places, too, they're worshiping baby Tammuz, weeping for baby Tam Tammuz, and God didn't like that too much. As, you know, he was he was born again as the reincarnated sun god of Nimrod. S Sam Ramus also claimed that a full-grown evergreen tree sprang overnight from a dead stump, which symbolized the re-erection of the new penis of Nimrod, or in other words, the springing forth of new life. You know, on... Uh, each anniversary of his birth, every December 25th, Nimrod would visit the evergreen tree and leave gifts upon it. 
that that's where a lot of uh, the Yule log comes from that they'd throw in the fire, and then the next day it would be uh, re-erected as the full tree, and the, the serpent was wrapped around it. That's where that comes from, that story of Nimrod. Uh, in Egypt, af- after God confounded the, the, na- the languages at the Tower of Babel, the, the story of Nimrod, Samaramus, and ba- baby Tammuz was spread across the earth in over 70 languages. Uh, in Egypt, Horus, the, the son of Isis, the Egyptian title for the Queen of Heaven, was born at this very same time of December 25th. In accordance with the story of Nimrod, ancient Egyptians used to bring trees into their homes for their winter solstice festivals in which children placed gifts at the bottom, you know, and Sirius the dog star, r- a really a representation of Anubis, was, was placed at the top of the tree. The Egyptians even dipped uh, balls in gold and silver. They, they'd cut testicles off of animals or sacrifices, and they'd hang them from their trees. It represented the testicles of their, their sun god, Ra, like a fertility kind of deal. One of the early roots of the, the modern Christmas character Santa Claus was actually the god Molech, or uh, Chamosh. Every December 25th on the ancient calendar, this is recorded in the Bible too, uh, a public child mass or, or sacrifice was held. The, the head priest would stoke this iron image of the enthroned Molech with, uh, with wood and burning pitch, and it, they'd turn it into this giant glowing red furnace. And then the people, they'd take uh, and make a long list of the desires that they wanted, and they'd recite them to their god of prosperity, you know, just before they put their infant children into the red hot lap of the glowing red god. And he was wearing a Phrygian cap too, just like Santa Claus, that Phrygian cap. That that was uh that was one of the caps on the statues that they had there too. A very interesting similarity. That's actually the roots of, of the Santa Claus character. It, it, it kind of sick the priests would interpret revelations uh, through the the screaming of the burning babies. So they'd get these revelations from their God through the screams of these babies. Kind of sick. In Rome, there was the the largest pagan religion which fostered sun uh, worship in the Greek and Roman worlds at this time was was the cult of Mithraism. The other sun gods was supposedly born on December 25th as well. They uh, they called it the nativity of the sun. The, the Romans separated this winter holiday into, into several different parts. Uh, they, first from the 17th to the 21st of December was the was Saturnalia, a riotous feast laden with drunkenness and, and violent orgies, you know. Second on on the on the twenty second they had the second feast which was uh, sigillaria, or the, the they called it the feast of dolls. When a fair was held, and dolls and other toys, mostly of earthenware, were given to children. <laughs> 